Okay, so here's a valve that comes with uh, the Adoja gardening system. So we've already got a, a wire and some connectors on here and, and you can just take these two ends and what you'll end up doing is you'll end up just screwing those into either this channel or this channel um, to, to run the valve. This is where our water is going to come in. We've got a hose nozzle into a T connector. It splits it into two runs. It's going to be pressurized up until this point so now I've got two leads from the solenoids and I'll show you how those plug in in just a sec okay guys so usually our uh, most of our products ship with easy snap connectors but with the solenoid uh, kits and products uh, you can buy this separately but this this baseboard ships with it it's got screw terminal connectors so the solenoid channels are going to run on the motor switch channel 1 or motor switch channel 2. The equivalent of that on snap connectors is this or this. Electrically it's all the same. So all we're going to do is we're just going to screw in the wires from the solenoids into uh, these two terminals here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and screw in um, the solenoid valve leads into one of these switch terminals each one into one and the polarity doesn't matter so you can get the wires reversed uh, the, the same is not true for some of the other components but for this particular one you can just plug in screw in each terminal make sure you've got a good tight fit on each one and then Go ahead and screw the other one in. And the reason you want to use these channels is it powers at whatever voltage you plug in on the back. So we ship with 12 volts, but you can drop lower if you want to run at a lower voltage for whatever reason. So we've got this other one, other channel screwed in. And that's pretty much it. The water level sensor switch is going to be able to be plugged into either this channel here or this channel here and uh, you'll be able to select that in the IOT panel so we're going to extend this cable drill a hole in, in this uh, in this bowl and then um, get an enclosure for this guy so he can live separately and then uh, we'll, we'll be done and all we got to do is get power to him so we'll go and show you that right now okay so we've got the, uh, a hole drilled here and we've got the level switch uh, pretty high on the bowl uh, we want it to trip relatively low uh, we're going to give a keep the water as fresh as possible okay so we've got it in um, we're gonna go ahead and get a good tight fit on top we're gonna, we're gonna fit the nut and just get the nut good and tight you can tighten that by hand for the most part you should be able to get away with that I'm probably gonna give it a little tighten with a wrench but it's good you don't want to get this uh, rubber gasket too tight. As you can see, it's already got some good pressure on it there. That should be pretty good. Um, all right, so we're gonna end up drilling a hole up top here, bring the hose in up top here, and then bring it down along the bottom. Um, that should keep the water pretty fresh. So what we need to do is we need to extend this cable the length of where we are. And the way we're gonna do that is we've got some uh, utility wire. Um, it's the same wire we use for the solenoids, that gray wire. And we're going to join that with the um, water valve, or uh, excuse me, with the water level sensor switch wires with these butt connectors. So you just kind of put these over one end and you'll do one at a time and then you'll take the wire, uh, the utility wire end, once we get it cut, put it on this end and you'll use these crimpers and then just get a good crimp, crush and get the wires together. So we'll show you that assembly here in a minute. Okay, so I'm going to plug one wire into the butt connector and one of the ends of the extension that we're going to plug into our baseboard or I.O. board there. And polarity doesn't matter with a water level sensor switch, so you don't have to worry about that. You can use either wire, connect to either wire, and then just give it a good crimp. Make sure you've got a good tight connection and do the same with the other wire. Make sure you've got a connect, good connection uh, on each end and um, you're going to want to waterproof this a little more, maybe wrap some electrical tape around it. Um, you can also put it in a dielectric grease if you want to be real uh, good about it and bury it. 
but um, we're just going to wrap it with electrical tape and bury it. So if you take a look at the, the bowl, we've already pre-drilled um, some holes and we've got some twist ties. We're going to use this to secure our poly tube. It's going to come in over here over our level switch. We don't want it to interfere with our level switch, so we're going to run it along the sides and then down into our bowl. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to set up a second bowl and run on a T uh, so the dogs can uh, have good water and good for good redundancy there um, when, when one bowl goes empty. So um, we'll probably end up set up a whole other second system for, for absolute redundancy, uh, but we won't show that in this video. We've, we've run some poly tubing along the inside of the bowl. It'll spray down on the bottom. Um, here's the water level sensor switch. Notice how we've got the tubing away from that. We're going to back this up to keep the dogs away from that so they to avoid them from triggering it inadvertently. Now we're going to plug in a lead to our T connector poly tubing that's going to go to our other bowl. And once that's on there firm, go ahead and get that screwed up good. Okay, we've got two bowls where we want them. We've got them set up to the T connector. Now we're going to run our main line uh, right here. So we'll just go ahead and get that set up. Okay, that's set up. And what we're going to do here is we're going to bury this and we're going to put it in this uh, dielectric capsule, dielectric grease. There's a grease in there that is going to protect this uh, from you know the elements and the rain so we're just gonna go shove it up in there and we're gonna dig a hole here and bury that we won't show that though but you just only have to bury you know maybe six inches or so all right let's go ahead and run the line and get uh, our wire hooked up to our board okay so we've got our line run um, what we're gonna do is uh, just go ahead and get the other end into our valve. Okay, so we've got our two outdoor enclosures mounted to a uh, just a little wood truss that we kind of threw up. These are going to house. This is going to house our uh, unit. Here we've got the the valves on the left ready to go. Wires just coming out the bottom. We're going to go ahead and install the board and electronics into this one. We're going to go ahead and stick the enclosure, um, and we're going to go ahead and power it up. Uh, through up here um, just up top so we've got a little slit for uh, our, our extension cable and that's how we're gonna power it um, and then we'll pull up any wires that we need right through here so what we can do is we can go ahead and guide in our solenoid wires baseboard mounted in the back once we get everything screwed in it's easier to screw everything in out here okay so we've got the first uh, valve set up ready to go that's going to the dog bowls okay so we've got a, uh, a hose adapter with a, a rubber washer in there to make sure that it's watertight um, we're gonna just, here's where we're gonna hook our hose up to Go ahead and take the uh, second valve channel, which runs to the dog bowls, and just go ahead and screw them in the, these, uh, this terminal block here. Okay, so we've got the second uh, wire screwed in, and all we're going to do now is plug, screw in the level sensor switch, and we can do that in either of these two green terminals. Okay, so I've got the uh, wires in, and all I need to do now is just screw them in. You want to twist them and down real tight get both sides in. Now this is the level sensor switch. This here is the garden channel. This here is the dog bowl channel. It's all set to go. I'm going to go ahead and uh, power it up. Okay, so it's filling up. Um, our water bowls are filling. We're good to go. Let's go show you how to program the profile real quick. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and create a brand new profile and we're going to call it Auto Garden Plus Dog bowl refill. And then we 
I'm just going to create that um, for the motor switch channel one. That's going to be our garden channel. So we're just going to set that to valve lock and we're going to set it by a trigger. Uh, it doesn't need to be in a group because it's triggering by itself. We want this guy to run for, let's say, two minutes when it runs. See how that works out. Um, and then we're going to set this up so the moisture sensor triggers it. For the second channel, this one's going to be the dog bowl channel. This one is also going to be valve lock by trigger. Uh, doesn't need to have a group. This one we're going to trigger. Uh, uh, let's try for a minute and see uh, if that's enough to fill it up. Uh, we can adjust this later when, when, if we need to. For pull up sensor, that's where we plugged in the water level sensor switch. And what we're going to do is, uh, I'm going to go ahead and set an alert on trigger, and then um, device name has watered dogs. And then uh, we're not going to do a protect action. We could protect a pump and prevent it from uh, going if we wanted to. But what we are going to do is we are going to trigger... Um, this second pin right here, this pin five. So that's going to be our dog bowl trigger. We're going to set that up to trigger here and then make sure you click deploy. So that's deployed. It's got a check mark next to it. So the water level sensor switch to recap. You can set an alert message. It's going to send an alert when it, when it runs low, just so I know, just to make sure it's working right the first few times. So I might turn that off. Um, but I can always check every year once in a while and see how often it's been watered in the dashboard. Um, so that's deployed, um, and then we're not using the second water level sensor switch or anything, so we can leave that alone. For the analog sensor, we're going to use the soil moisture sensor. Um, we are going to trigger that first group of, of, of uh, valves, and then we want to trigger it, I'd say, around moisture level 6, water to um, 7, and then maybe max cycle to hit target 3 times, so it'll try that water cycle 3 times to get everything nice and uh, moist. Now, you got to calibrate this moisture sensor, which uh, I've already gone ahead and done, but the way you do that is you go back to the actual device, which this is Samuel. He's set to a different profile right now. Here's where we calibrated him. Okay, so actually his seven-day high is 783, so he's dry right now. We've got him outside drying, so let's just set that to 790 on the upper end, and then that's good 390 on the lower end. That's from when we had uh, we're putting water on it earlier. And then we can uh, let's change his profile to... Auto garden with dog bowl refill. Save details. So now he's got his right profile. So he should uh, water the garden um, as he, as it's needed, as well as uh, turn that dog bowl sensor or start filling that dog bowl up. So good to go. Let's go check it out. Okay, I'm gonna test it and dump them out. Already refilling. That worked on an interrupt. There you go, guys. A self-watering uh, dog bowl refill. Hardware is good to go.